Hey guys and welcome back. We're going to cover a few questions today off the mathematical knowledge portion of the ASVAB. Now remember, the mathematical knowledge portion is not so much word problems as it is straight mathematical content. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive right in. So this is starting the mathematics knowledge portion of the ASVAB, the military entrance exam. And hopefully they start off usually pretty easy. And you can see here, this is probably, some of you guys could do this in like a matter of seconds, but I want to make sure to explain each step. So if this is not something you would know the answer to right off, let's go ahead and take a look. So first off, this square root two. Well, I don't know if you knew or not, but square root can cancel out with squared. So really, you would just be able to cancel out the square root and cancel out the 4 into a 2. And then you would just have 2 squared, which would be 4. But let's talk about why that is. The square root of 2 is actually the same thing as saying 2 to the 1 half power. Because that's what the square root is. It's taken to the 1 half power. And then you have that raised to the 4th. Well, there's also a rule that allows you with exponents to go ahead and multiply exponents that are raised to another exponent. So if I do one half times the four, that's where we're going to get that two raised to the second power. And two squared just means we're doing two times two, which is going to give us four. Hopefully that helps. Tell you what, I love me some good algebra rules. And looking here, if you didn't know, whenever you're dividing two fractions, instead of dividing, you can actually just multiply them. And when you switch from division to multiplying, you just flip that second fraction upside down. So I'm going to put that x to the third over 3y squared. Now, looking at this, if you didn't know, just like exponent rules that we looked at yesterday, if you are multiplying two numbers with the same base and different exponents, you can just add their exponents together. So we're going to have 9 times x to the fifth on top. And then on bottom, we got technically y to the 1. So again, we're just going to do 1 plus that 2 to give me 3y to the third power because we're multiplying again. With that said, 9 divided by 3 is just 3, so we're going to end up getting a final answer of 3x to the 5th over y to the 3rd, because that 9 and 3, that's going to cancel out, just leaving us with that 3. So if I'm looking at my answers here, that looks like that is answer B. Chill, 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 because this one may actually be a lot harder than you thought. It says the probability of rolling an even number on a set of two dice is what? Well, first and foremost, there are six sides to the dice, I'm assuming, because they're not really claiming one or the other. So that's default six. So six and then another die with six. That means that if you're trying to find the total number of options here, the fundamental counting principle says that you can multiply your number of options for each thing. So six times six means that there are 36 different outcomes when you roll two dice together and then add them up. So in this case, how many of those 36 options would be an even number? Well, if you didn't know going through them, there is one way you can roll a two and that is just rolling a one and one. There are two ways you can roll a three. That would be like a one and a two or a two and a one. And that actually just goes up each time. So for four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and 12, you get three ways of doing that, four ways for that, five ways for that, six ways for that. And then it actually goes back down. Five, four, three, two, and one way to get a 12. So these are the total number for each ones. Now we're looking for an even, so let's go ahead and add up all the even ones. So we have even here, here, I'm just going through. So if we add all of these guys up, we should get our final answer. So five and five will give us 10, plus another three and three would be 16, plus another one for 17, and another for 18. So that means 18 out of the 36 possibilities. Well, 18 is exactly half of it, so that means that our final answer here should be A. Number four is fairly easy here. Let's break down a few things. It says in circle O, the radius is six units long. Find the diagonal of square QRST. So first and foremost, in order to find the diagonal, we're going to need a side length here. Well, it gives us the radius right here, but if this is the radius, then that means the radius goes this way for the same amount. Meaning that our side length here is just six plus that six, giving us 12. Now, if you did not know, there is a rule that says that the diagonal of a square is equal to the side length 
times the square root of 2. Now this goes off the idea of it being like a 90, 45, 45 triangle, and that's where this the rule of the square root 2 comes in. But if we're going ahead and going through using that logic, we just need to do 12 times the square root of 2, which means the final answer here is C. For number five, it's all about your reading skills here. So let's go ahead and read this out loud once. Let's see, it says, if six less than twice the number is added to 10, the result is two. An equation that represents that is, okay, well, it says that it is two. So it's probably gonna be one of these two, but let's go ahead and look at that again. So it says, if six less than, so six less than means that we would be subtracting six. All right, so we got that. But what is that six less than? Twice a number, twice a number. So we're gonna say twice a number would be two times a number, which we'll say is X, all right? And then it says is added to 10. So we're taking this six less than twice a number, like I think really there should be like parentheses around here, but we'll see why we don't need that in a second. And they say that that's added to 10. So this whole thing should be added to 10 and that's going to give us 2, because the result is 2. So when we're looking through here, those are the answers, we can end up dropping the parentheses and why they don't matter, because there's nothing here that would be distributed, so it's just going to be regular operations all the way through. So looking through here, that answer is indeed going to end up being D. So this question, number six, on the ASVAB, is literally just asking you to take this number and divide by 12. But remember... There's no calculator on this test, so that means you either have to do it the long way or maybe you're going to use some of the common core math. I'm going to start off by just trying to give you a quick reminder. How do you go about doing long division? So something like this, all right? Now, when we do long division, we essentially take the number of digits right here and we look at the first number of digits in our number. So in this case, 12 doesn't go into 8 because that's only one digit, so we got to at least go two digits in. 82 is bigger than this, so this works. Now, 12 times what will get me as close as possible to 82 without going over? Well, 12 times 7 is going to put us over um, up at the, what, 84? So in this case, we can't do 7. We'll have to go with 6. So we're going to do 12 times 6. Now, what does that actually end up giving us? Well, 12 times 6 is 72. So I'm going to go ahead and put the 72 right here. You subtract the 2, giving me 10, and you bring this 6 down. Now we do this same process again, but notice it's three digits because 12 is not going to go into the 10. So 12 goes into 106 how many times? Well, in this case, we're going to go with 8 because 12 times 8 is going to give me 96. All right, so we're going to bring down this 96. Now we have 106 minus the 96, which is going to give us 10. And guess what? We don't have anything else. So now we put our decimal point and go ahead and pretend that there's a zero here. And we're going to bring that down like we did the six. So now 100. So 12 goes into 100 how many times? Well, that's actually going to be the same here. So eight. Now we actually have to keep going here because we do have both of these answers and we're rounding. So it could get rounded up to here. Let's go ahead and take a look. So in this case, 12 is going to go into 100 eight times. We said that's another 96. So we get to bring down a, well, another zero. But in this case, when we subtract, we have a four. So 12 is going to go into 43 times. And now we can stop because we realize we're not going to round this up. So our final answer here is actually going to be A because we'll keep it at this eight. Hey guys, that's all we're going to cover for today, but remember, you can always click on any of these videos over here to help you keep studying for your next attempt on the ASVAB.